I don't know, five reports and I only had to make one flyer because by the time I got to it, we were already putting two and two together. I'd have a lost flyer and then I'd have, or a lost report and then I'd have the found report of this, the dog being found. So that's wow. a good thing. You know, the, that's yeah, the good that's part great. of it. Yeah. But then yeah, there's still those great. ones that we're just not sure what's happened to them. You know, there's a couple that are still missing since the first and it's breaking my heart. Not, I mean, no sightings, no nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing. Wow. So I don't know, but we did have a good one yesterday, a cat that was reunited. It was gone one year, one month and 11 days. <laughs> Wow. I know. Yeah. And it was uh, only four I, miles from home. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And was it microchip? No. <laughs> so they, so, so they yeah. just, yeah. Well, it was, it was thankfully not a tabby cat, so it was recognizable. It was a pretty, okay. um, I don't know if it was a Siamese mix or what, but it had the Siamese coloring, but the lighter kind, um, like a rag doll almost, and fluffy and distinctive markings on its face so the the owner had posted with us when it went law or when it was lost and um you know we keep them in albums so we just went to that album and one of my uh, volunteers put two and two together and said oh my gosh i think that is baymax and sure enough it was wow i know that's great yeah ah the, you know uh, things that, like that, that is we like, love those days when they when they match up I know. And it, you got to wonder, <laughs> like, okay, did, did somebody have the cat find it and keep it and it got away again? Because it wasn't, like, in any bad shape, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Huh. Uh, we had we had a reunion. Well, not a reunion. It was, unfortunately, it was, uh, we still counted as a case closed. Um, but it was a, a dog found deceased with a microchip that went missing in 2016. And, Aww. Um, the dog was extremely shy, gotten away from a, a foster home, um, and probably pretty much lived on its own all that time. Um, oh, from geez. what we can, what we can get. It was, it was a good shape. I mean, it definitely had a food source. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, so I mean, they're they're out there. I'm just looking to see what. Yeah. So we have we have not we've had 22 listings since the beginning. Well, I'm sorry, that's 22 still lost. Since okay. the beginning of the year, so uh, we've taken in quite a few more listings than that. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh yeah, we've taken so we've taken in, uh, and we have forty back home since the beginning of the year. So we yeah. that would be like sixty-two. But unfortunately, we've already got four deceased. Oh wow! Yeah, um, we we've got that part. one one that we're aware of right now, and and you know we do get reports every day of deceased pets, but that can't be identified. So, you know, some of these deceased that are being found um, without chips or any ID and not really easily ID'd because, you know, maybe it's another tabby cat without very specific markings. Um, those are so hard because you can't, you can't know who the owner is. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Last year we had, I just put up our stats and we had 47 deceased, which, you know, and we had a, 27 20 2726 reunited so wow, 47 really deceased is not bad yeah yeah, yeah it was it was amazing <laughs> yeah. it's amazing yeah. But that makes us wonder, too, and that's why we talk about this all the time, like, what's going on? You know, like, why yeah. are there so many lost pets, you know, and, and what, what can we do to, what can we do to stop it? But at least, you know, it shows that what we do really matters and it really helps and um, yeah. it's working. We just want it to work a little better with the people putting their ID and their microchips in the pets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and like we said, you know, like keeping them on a leash, you know, when, mm -hmm. when it's, um, uh, and just being extra cautious. Um, do you ever have, uh, I, dogs in swimming pools? We've had that happen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, uh, actually, unfortunately happened to a friend of mine. Uh, the dog had always been extremely cautious around the swimming pool, never, ever had a problem. And as it got older, one day she just put him out to go potty and, he fell in and yeah. she didn't realize it so she went to call him back in and he was in the pool and couldn't get out yeah i think we've since i've been doing this um i think we've only had two 
So it surprises me because of how many pools are down here that there isn't more, mm -hmm. but there may be more and I just don't know, you know, but there's two yeah. that I, I remember. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's sad. And I know when, you know, we, I just went up to St. Augustine for a few days and the first thing we do when we leave and have a pet sitter come here is even though we have a pet sitter, we put up that pool gate, you know, the safety gates that they didn't have those back in New York, but down here, I guess they're required or whatever when you sell your home. And so I came with our house and it's, you know, it's, I don't know, a chest high on me and I'm like five foot three or something. And um, so it's a pretty tall thing and it's made of like a real heavy material and it has stakes that go into the cement. And um, we put that up every time we leave because our dogs oh, will fl okay. fly around, run around, you know, and right. we don't want to take a chance that they get near the pool, you know. But, and does that go all the way around the pool then? Well, the way they're set up is it just because our pool is in a cage, you know how they have those cages down in Florida. Um, so it goes from oh, one yes. side okay, of the cage yes. to the other. So thankfully, you only need one long strip of it. <laughs> but okay. yeah, okay. so it, it cl okay. closes off the one side of the pool so they can't get into the pool area. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's important, yeah. you know, little things like that when you go away, you know, little things to secure um right yeah yeah and just yesterday i got my husband put up because we always have that problem at the front door and i know this is a problem during the holidays when people come in and going dogs bolting or sneaking past company or you know you get a package and out goes the dog when the delivery man's at the door um at the end of my porch my husband just put up a um i guess it's a baby gate maybe a pet gate i don't know he they he actually secured it to the walls of the porch and it has the gate that you can open and close and get in and out. Cause I'm like, I'm not taking a chance, Yeah. you know, uh -huh. cause I have one that's yeah. a bolter, you know, right. right. I have one yep. that's a bolter and I just can't take a chance with her. Um, yeah. She'll just bolt. That, that just those little things, you know, that just that little extra time or whatever can really do pre prevent so many problems. Um, just, yep. you know, being, being so, the, the, just, just thinking ahead, I guess, about what could happen, you know, just yeah. not being complacent. Huh. Um, the, oh, I lost my train of thought again. Huh. Oh, the, I, was, I know what I was going to ask you. So do you have the problem um, where you're having more and more uh, shy dogs being adopted and getting away? We really have that problem mm. right now. You know, it seems like almost every week we've got a foster dog that's escaped. We did just have one a couple of days ago, and I don't know if that one was found. We have a lost one that was recently adopted, and I don't believe that one is going to be found because it was wearing a collar with a leash attached and it ran off into the woods and there has been no sign of it at all and I'm afraid it's stuck somewhere in the woods okay. you know um but yeah we do have that a lot where we have fosters newly adopted pets that um get out we have that a lot yeah yeah we're we, we've just really had a had a problem with that we have a lot of um rescues and shelters bringing up uh dogs from overcrowded shelters in you know in other states and uh, of course that's a great thing but you know so many of these dogs are, are coming in um, very under socialized and then they're not given very much time to decompress mm -hmm. and then we they're going into foster homes that really don't know how to deal with uh how to take the precautions you know that are necessary for dealing with a, a really scared dog a stressed out dog and um and they're getting away and yeah very I know, and I don't know what the answer is to that, you know, other than the education at the um, shelter and rescue level, you know, with very yeah. strong education there, um, because yeah. I think that seems to be lacking about, yeah. you know, the, the, or people are getting the education and they're not heeding the advice. Right, right. And again, with some <laughs> complacency, you know, goes on there too, I think, where it's, oh, well, we've always done it this way and, you know, it's going to be fine and, um and it just takes a second, you know, of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just turning your back just for a second and something goes wrong. Yeah. A, a, new, a newly adopted dog um, just a couple of weeks ago that 
jumped right through uh, a screen door. I was mm. was just really stressed out. Very going to be a very sweet dog, and it, and she was well, she was hit by a car and then recovered. Um, but she, but you know, there she she just really had not had much time to decompress in the new home, and and really the owner was not at fault because he I don't think ever would have believed that she would have just you know leapt out through the door like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know these things just happen, the craziest things, and you don't know. Well, here we are again, Kathy, all out of time. <laughs> it, goes, it seems but... like you talk about very depressing things today. I know, I know. <laughs> so why don't you tell everybody how they can read up on all these depressing things on your website? No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> to read up on all the important topics that we talked about so they can learn what to do to keep their pets safe. Yeah, so we are, our website is lostdogsofamerica.org, and our Facebook page is Lost Dogs of America, and we try to post educational articles, some prevention and some recovery tips and some inspirational stories to help people get their, uh, keep people's hopes up, you know, right. and so that they, uh, so that they do eventually um, find their dog. Right. And we don't always talk about depressing things and we hope we didn't depress yeah. people, but it is important to realize that, you know, to avoid these sad things, there are, there are really good tools and, and tips in place on the Lost Dog of America webpage um, that you really should take some time and look at it. Cause I mean, they have so many articles and so much good information. So, all right, Kathy, well, thanks again for being with me, and I look forward to talking with you again next month. Okay, thank you for having me. All right. So, okay, everybody, until next time, please remember that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives, so be sure your pet is microchipped and wearing its ID tags, and if it is chipped, that that chip is registered and up-to-date. I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this has been Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.